So, hi. hi. <laughs> the name of my talk is From Barcodes to Product Information. Um, just to briefly introduce myself, my name is Oliver Drobnik and I'm a full-time iOS developer since January 2010. Before that, I was working part-time like on my own apps while having full-time employment. But since January 2010, that's all I do. Uh, so I got a little bit of an experience and some of you might have seen my blog or me on Twitter. I tend to write quite a bit about iOS matters. Um, and it just so happened about a year ago, I got um, uh, into writing a book. And so that will, will be the first thing that I'm going to uh, tell you about. Uh, the topic of my first half is basically barcodes and iOS. Um, why barcodes? Uh, barcodes are a cheap technology because it's been around for four decades, decades already. Um, it's incredibly cheap to put a barcode on any product, and most products that you buy in a supermarket, even the beers that you're holding in your hands, all have a barcode on it. Yeah. Because it's cheap, because you need to print something on the packaging anyway, so uh, yeah, they, they just add a barcode, and so it's uh, recognizable uh, by a machine. It's reliable, because you don't need to exchange batteries in your beer can, yeah, it just works. Um, it's ubiquitous, meaning every beer has a, a barcode. <laughs> And it's secure because that's another thing nowadays with privacy. If you had an RFID chip, somebody might spot what brand of beer you are drinking from a distance. With a barcode, he has to actively scan it. So that's perfectly secure. Uh, the other thing is uh, Apple needed to add barcode technology in iOS 6 because they were introducing Passbook. And as you know, Passbook uh, displays barcodes, 2D barcodes for uh, tickets. Um, as of iOS 7, they even added several public APIs, and that's where my interest was peaked, because I was looking through the uh, release notes at that time, roughly a year ago, uh, and I was wondering, why, why does Apple uh, add public APIs for barcodes? That's, isn't that an outdated, old technology nobody needs anymore? Well, it got me kind of thinking in, in this direction. And you might ask yourself, okay, what happened with iOS 8? Well, nothing much happened. They just added a data detector or a CI uh, detector to core image. But apart from that, the technology they added for barcodes in iOS 7 still stands. Um, so my hypothesis is um, if Apple adds some new uh, public API, either they need it themselves or uh, they have tons of radars for it. So if Lots of developers say, we want barcode scanning. Well, then they're going to implement it. So uh, that brings me to my book that I've been writing for the last 11 months. And it just so happens my publisher uh, likes you developers. So uh, as of today, you get 44% off all books at manning.com until December 3rd with this promo code MOBIT for the win. So. <laughs> I, I found it kind of a, a funny thing here. Um, and this book is in a way special. Normal technology books are, I call them horizontal. If you think of technologies like uh, layers in a cake, um, say a book about core data is about the layer core data. But in my case, um, it's a vertical technical book because barcode technology in iOS cuts through several different kinds of technologies and this makes this book quite interesting. So it's not a book just about barcodes, yeah, um, but it's actually a book about barcodes and many things more, many technologies that are uh, first appearing in I iOS 7 um, that this is actually about. So let me give you a, a, a quick overview. This is the table of contents. Yeah? Uh, so the first chapter is about the things you need to know, what kind of barcodes there are, where they are used, how to tell them apart. There are quite a, quite a few technical uh, words that you might want to know uh, about when talking about barcodes so that you don't sound like an idiot talking about it. So the second thing um, is all the parts of AB Foundation that are needed for media capture, um, about authorization for accessing the camera, uh, 
cam accessing camera features. Um, originally, I had just one chapter, but it's such a big, big topic that I had to split it in two. The second half is then actually scanning barcodes, that is the metadata detector added on top of media capture. There's quite a few things to uh, consider when it comes to performance and UI. You just don't want to simply have a, a preview where you then say, okay, uh, point this at a, at a barcode and that's it. But there's, there's certain UI considerations uh, if you're scanning a 2D barcode versus a 1D barcode. And even this distinction, 1D barcode, 2D barcodes, is something you learn in chapter one. So th the first kind of barcode that you could actually generate in a manner of speaking on an iPhone was with Passbook. You don't even, you don't really have APIs there for, for producing it, but if you produce a pass for Passbook, then you essentially have uh, produced a, a barcode. So that's why I have a, a, a chapter dedicated to this. And it's even, I'm quite proud of that. I'm just a, a normal iOS developer, but in this chapter I have an excursion to Ruby. So I explain how to create passes with a Ruby script, and then uh, at the end of the chapter, I uh, present an iOS app, how you can uh, verify that this pass has not been tampered with on an iOS device. Yeah? Uh, then generating barcodes is about several topics still, um, about generating 2D barcodes with core image, uh, where this is uh, possible with public APIs, mostly about AirPrint, uh, because obviously, uh, you don't just want to have the barcodes on the display of the phone, but it's a really good use case to either print an a, a A4 uh, sheet of uh, QR code stickers um, or even a single uh, serial number stickers with a 1D barcode, say, for example, to put on hardware if you have an uh, enterprise inventory uh, app, for example. Um, the final two chapters are sort of kind of the icing on the cake, yeah? um, they, they don't necessarily directly have to do with barcodes, but I felt these are topics that go, to, go with that really well, because uh, once you have scanned a barcode, you want to do something with it, uh, and that's why I'm uh, explaining NSURL session, which was new in iOS 7 as well. So if you are going to do barcode scanning, you have to require iOS 7, so you can make use of the, the new goodness that's available in NSURL session. There's also a section on OAuth, and uh, I'm accessing uh, the Discogs database, which is a music media database where you can basically find CDs, LPs by uh, barcode. And the last chapter is another uh, often requested thing uh, to do something about uh, iBeacons, and I feel that I, I, I chose the, the chapter name because of this. It's the, if you scan a barcode in a certain context, like a context defined by an iBeacon that's sticking to a shelf of books, for example, then the developer of the app might know ah, that that's, uh, certain information is useful in this, this context. And so that's, we, I'm, I'm dealing here with core location, geolocation, and also iBeacons. So uh, that brings me to the second, second half uh, of, of my talk. And uh, I already said it before, you scan a barcode, uh, you want to do something with it. Yeah? Because in reality, a barcode is just a number. So devices have mobile internet. So the first thing I thought as an engineer, okay, I'm scanning, there's the internet. Hey, I, I could actually query a web service. And the, the uh, first that my uh, developmental editor suggested to me was Discox. He's an audio nut, so he knew about this website. I didn't even know about it. But it's a really great uh, crowdsourced database of music media. And so what I did is the chapter six sample app is a music collection app where you see here, um, these are basically all CDs that are scanned by the barcodes, and then I got the information from Discox for it. Uh, though music media is a little bit restrictive if you have to, uh, want to do other things. Um, and the problem is they don't do any normalization of barcodes. So uh, some users might have added a barcode with spaces where the marker bars are and other hasn't. So uh, it is sometimes difficult to find a specific barcode because it's just not written like it should be. Like, like 
just the number of the 12 digits or the 13 digits. And the other problem is there's no, no real single source of product information that you can really rely on to get, get your uh, uh, data. Some of you might now think, okay, the biggest database uh, on the internet that has products is, uh, okay, first, GS, GS1 is the um, uh, organization that maintains the barcode st standard, yeah? They don't even have this information, they only have the prefixes of the manufacturers, but you said it, Amazon.com. But, guess again, I even implemented, I, I, I spent an entire week implementing a, a, a wrapper around the API for the Amazon product advertising API that worked perfectly. I was able to, to scan products and get product information, but then I read the license agreement, which says, you will not, without our express prior written approval, use any product advertising content on blah, 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 in an application designed or intended for use with a mobile phone. So, that's a big bummer. You have so, such nice information there, but you are not uh, supposed to use it. And there... With, with, with what? With iPod stuff. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Technical. <laughs> but even in any other handheld device, it says. <laughs> now you could say, no, you can't do it with your TV. No, not even the, no, not even the internet TV. You can't hold 6 plus in your hand. <laughs> yeah, this 6 plus might not be a handheld device. It's, a, it's almost a... <laughs> if you have big hands, but the solution that I put forward is that that was a thing you have to think about me in November last year, brooding over this, my God, they are so stupid, why can't they let me let, uh, let this information? I even uh, contacted them uh, about that and then I got back an information, ah, only in ex extreme circumstances they would allow me to that, so I said, ah, for, forget about it, yeah, uh, let's do something ourselves. And so with a couple of people, I founded a startup. We called it Product Layer because it's uh, sort of the, the missing layer of product information on the internet. And let me briefly tell you, I, I promise I just have one slide. Uh, what is it about? It's a free JSON and RESTful web service. Um, it's got an iOS SDK on GitHub, which is open source. Uh, we've got 1.7 million products so far. It's not so much, but it's a start. Um, we have the standard categories that the standard organization uh, uh, decided on, and we have a few more to give it additional granularity. Um, you can build any app you like with it. Yeah? We'll even help you promote it if it's a nice app. Um, and the idea is that your, your app users will contribute back to the service. So if if it should happen that one user of your app scans something that doesn't yet exist, he's, he's kindly asked, well, would you like uh, to tell us the name of what you ju just scanned? And the second user scanning the same barcode already has the same information. And so it happens that multiple users basically work together to refine the information that's available on individual products. Another thing that we also do is um, you can have lists, so like you have your Amazon wish list, you can have that free via our API, and the idea is that now uh, we are enabling apps that do wish lists, shopping lists, whatever lists, yeah? um, and via the product layer service, these can be shared amongst all apps. So an app that you build uh, basically is sort of like a Twitter client. Yeah? We, we have the platform yeah, that you can use, and all the other apps that also uh, allow the users to log into their product layer accounts can then see uh, the, the user's information. Yeah? Um, so I ask you, just go to developer.productlayer.com to si sign up for a free account. Um, I have not told you that yet, but I'm the developer evangelist there, so if you have any questions, you can ask me. And that brings me to the final slide. Yeah, you can uh, contact me on Twitter at Coconetics or, or also at ProductLayer uh, and via my websites with the same names.com. Thank you for watching. <laughs>